If there's one thing the general public doesn't give much attention to that has great importance to our climate change, it's seaweed. Yes, we know seaweed as a dish or as those things that wash up on the shore that look creepy, slimy, and smell funky, but there's more to this marine plant than meets the eye. In fact, companies are even keen on starting seaweed farming, and more environmentalists have been speaking about the potential of seaweed. So are you also curious what these marine beings currently do for us and our planet? Hello, everybody. How you going these days? Welcome back to our channel where, once again, the topic of today's video is about seaweed farming and why they're in demand. Today's episode is a great eye-opener on this marine life, so watch until the end to know more. One more thing before we get to that, kindly leave a thumbs up on today's video, and while you're at it, subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on so you won't miss out on any of our newest uploads. What are seaweeds? The term seaweed is used as the common name for countless species of marine plants and algae that grow in the ocean as well as in rivers, lakes, and other water bodies. There are about 12,000 species of seaweeds in the world with over 7,000 red algae, more than 2,000 phaophyta, some 50 1500 greens and perhaps 1500 blue greens. Seaweeds are classified into three major groups, namely brown algae, phyofuci, green algae, chlorophyta, and red algae, rhodophyta. The common seaweeds we see are the green ones, which are usually found in the intertidal zone, between the high and low water marks, and in shallow water where there's plenty of sunlight. About 140 species have been recorded around the coast. The brown seaweeds are usually medium to giant sized that typically grow at depths below the greens and above the reds. Brown seaweeds are usually present at rocky shores, and it has branching chains of water-filled bladders that help it withstand periods of exposure when the tide goes out. And finally, we have the red seaweeds, which have the largest group of them all. Red seaweed is used in salads, soups, and sushi. Grassalaria is harvested to make agar, a compound used in medical and biological research to culture bacteria and yeast. Many seaweeds are used to produce derivative chemicals that can be used for various industrial, pharmaceutical, or food products. Two major derivative products are carrageenan and agar. However, there are a wide range of bioactive ingredients that can be used for a variety of industries, such as the pharmaceutical industry, industrial food, and the cosmetic industry. What do seaweeds do for the environment? Unknown to many, seaweeds belong to a select number of foods that have a positive effect on the environment. Seaweed produces around 70% of the total oxygen on Earth and is the basis of the ocean food chain. It can remove toxins from the seawater as it grows, and they also play a major role in marine ecosystems. As the first organism in the marine food chain, they provide nourishment and energy for marine animals either directly when fronds are eaten or indirectly when decomposing parts break down into fine particles and are taken up by filter-feeding animals. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says marine algae produce anywhere from 50% to 80% of the Earth's oxygen supply, and seaweed absorbs a huge amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, according to the World Bank. Some studies also claim that seaweed farming could combat our growing problem regarding global warming. Seaweed also soaks up carbon and nitrogen, two pollutants lingering in the water. If ocean farmers devoted a little less than 5% of U.S. waters to growing seaweed, they could clean up an estimated 135 million tons of carbon and 10 million tons of nitrogen, according to a report from the World Bank. Seaweed as a power food. Not only does seaweed contribute a lot to the environment, but it's also packed with vitamins and minerals that are beneficial to humans. Seaweed contains iodine and tyrosine, which are essential vitamins to support the thyroid gland. The thyroid relies on iodine to make hormones, and without it, the body may experience symptoms such as weight changes, fatigue, or swelling of the neck over time. But of course, it's important to regulate your intake of seaweed, since too much consumption in an extended period may result in thyroid dysfunction. Aside from that, each seaweed has a unique source of vitamins and minerals. Seaweed contains small amounts of vitamins A, C, E, and K, along with folate, zinc, sodium, calcium, and magnesium. It can also be a good source of omega-3 fats and vitamin B12, as well as antioxidants. Aside from that, the antioxidants in seaweed can help prevent free radical damage to the skin and protect against skin aging. In addition, seaweed can moisturize and calm the skin. It's also good at combating acne. If that's not enough vitamins and minerals for you, seaweed is an excellent source of fiber, which is known to promote gut health, and some sugars found in seaweed, called sulfated polysaccharides, have been shown to increase the growth of good gut bacteria. Seaweed farming and its origins. Seaweed farming, or sometimes called kelp farming, goes a long way back, wherein studies have shown that this activity has been done since the Neolithic period. Seaweed farming consists of the management of naturally found batches, or in growing cases, it means fully controlling the growth, development, and life cycle of algae. Seaweed farming began in Japan as early as 1670 in Tokyo Bay. In autumn of each year, farmers would throw bamboo branches into shallow, muddy water where the spores of the seaweed would collect. A few weeks later, these branches would be moved to a river estuary. The nutrients from the river would help the seaweed to grow. Commercial cultivation of seaweeds in the tropics was pioneered in the 1950s in Cebu, Philippines. This was after the accidental introduction of sea lentillifera to fish ponds on the island of Mactan. It was further developed by local research, particularly through the efforts of Gabino Trono, since recognized as a national scientist of the Philippines. The growing demand of 
seaweed farming. The demand for commercial seaweeds from the food industry across the globe is rising due to its product efficiency and additional nutritional value to the food products. Additionally, several seaweed-produced hydrocolloids are used to increase the thickness and stability of food products. The largest seaweed-producing farms are located in Asia, specifically China, Indonesia, and the Philippines, with some other notable producers such as South Korea, Japan, Malaysia, North Korea, and Zanzibar in Tanzania. Because of the growing concern about our climate, seaweed farming has been continuously developed as a way to improve economic situations and reduce fishing pressure on overexploited fisheries. Most farm seaweed is consumed in food, but extracts are used in a wide variety of products, whether it is toothpaste, cosmetics, medicines, or pet food, and these often contain hydrocolloids derived from seaweed, which have gelling or thickening properties. And more products are coming, with other firms working on textiles and plastic alternatives, including biodegradable packaging, water capsules, and drinking straws. Seaweed production has boomed in recent years. Between 2005 and 2015, volumes doubled, surpassing 30 million tons annually, reports the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. It's a business worth more than $6 billion, 5 billion pounds worldwide. Regenerative ocean farming is growing crops that breathe life back into the ocean, said Brent Smith, seaweed farmer and founder of Thimble Island Ocean Farm and Greenway. No freshwater, no fertilizer, no feed make it the most sustainable food on the planet. But at the same time, our crops soak up carbon, nitrogen, rebuild reef systems. So they really become engines of restoration as we're farming and trying to make a living. The World Bank reported an analysis back in 2019 that shows expanding seaweed farming has the potential to further boost local incomes, food security, and environmental health. However, this is not an industry without challenges. Compared to regular farming of crops and other plants, seaweed farming is more sustainable since it requires no feeding other than sunlight and marine nutrients. Holding the ability to remove excess nutrients from aotrophic areas and even mitigating the effects of ocean acidification. Aside from that, scientists and researchers alike are looking into using seaweeds as fuel. Several companies and government agencies are funding efforts to reduce capital and operating costs and make algae fuel production commercially viable. Like fossil fuels, algae fuel releases carbon dioxide when burnt. But unlike fossil fuel, algae fuel and other biofuels only release carbon dioxide recently removed from the atmosphere via photosynthesis as the algae or plant grows. The energy crisis and the world food crisis have ignited interest in alga culture, farming algae, for making biodiesel and other biofuels using land unsuitable for agriculture. Now you know why seaweeds are in demand right now. So next time you're eating at your favorite restaurant, maybe you'll grow some more appreciation for this marine plant. And with that, we're concluding today's episode about seaweed farms, their environmental impact and importance, as well as why they're in demand right now. Hopefully you enjoyed watching today's video as much as we did making it. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on so you won't miss out on any of our new releases before you go. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next one.